Hi everybody, it's Rowan Smith with The Mortgage Center. I want to talk today about debt servicing. This is something that you're going to hear brokers bandy about the word as though you know what it means. If you're not in the industry, you probably don't. But what it essentially means is your ability to make payments on a particular amount of debt based on your provable and documentable income. So where debt servicing becomes important is if you're applying for a mortgage and let's say you've been paying $850 a month rent and you've been paying it for 10 years, you go and apply for a mortgage. The bank may or may not believe that you qualify for a $850 mortgage payment. Just making an $850 rent payment does not prove that you have the financial wherewithal on paper, at least, to make that payment from a qualification standpoint. The bank would say that your uh, income and the mortgage itself, the deal doesn't debt service. Now, what, where do those numbers come from or what were they looking for? Debt servicing is a calculation based on your gross taxable income. Now, every bank treats this differently. Every institution has their own quirks, their own twists, their own rules. If something is less than 20% down, you, you have to meet insurer guidelines, CMHC, Genworth, AIG. If something is more than 20% down, you still may have to meet those guidelines depending on which bank you go with. Alternatively, those banks may have their own non-high ratio or conventional mortgage guidelines that they follow. So, what are the rules or how is it calculated? Well, it's a complicated formula. So what I'm going to do is below here, I'm going to do a, a, a verbal of this whole blog post, but I'm also going to post the calculation so you can explain or you can understand how I'm explaining it. There's two different numbers to be aware of. GDS, gross debt service, and TDS, which is total debt service. Gross debt service is what percentage of your gross income is being included or, or is being used for housing expenses. So that's going to include the principal and interest on your mortgage, taxes, property taxes, uh, some of the strata fees, and in, in some cases, depending on the lender and whatnot, heat. So principal, interest, taxes, heat, and strata fees if applicable. That's what will go into your gross debt servicing. Now what they're looking at is you add all that stuff up, and you only use 50% of strata fees, which is a rule that uh, is often overlooked. You add all those figures up, principal, interest, taxes, heat, 50% of strata, if it's applicable, and you find out what percentage of your monthly income those are going to make up. Now what, what, now, what income figure do you use, though? You don't get to use, you know, just last year's with big bonuses or something. It depends. This is where it, again, it depends, it depends. You're going to hear me say that a lot. And that's why guys like me are in business, because we know which banks and which lenders look at income correctly. If you're salaried, it's very straightforward. They're just going to look at your, your base salary. If you're commissioned and you've been there for a couple of years, they're probably going to look at your last two years average of your line 150 income on your uh, uh, notices of assessment. They may want to see your T4s. If you're self-employed, they may uh, do the same thing or they may gross up your income to, because you know there's write-offs and whatnot. Certain lenders use addbacks where they'll put back non-cash expenses into that uh, notice of assessment figure. Things such as depreciation, uh, vehicle expenses if you're a sole proprietor, that kind of stuff. So knowing what income figure to use is very difficult. Generally, a two-year average will work or your base salary. That's the, those are the safest numbers to use. Now, with that gross debt servicing, what percentages are they going to allow? Well, the typical rule historically used to be 32, but the industry's kind of changed. And generally, if you've got uh, okay to decent credit, it's going to be 35% of your gross income. On the flip side of things, if you've got exceptional credit, it might be able to go as high as 44% of your gross overall income. Now, on the second ratio is total debt servicing, TDS. That's the, different, the second ratio they're looking at. So the bank wants to know two things. Gross debt service, what percentage of your income is being consumed by housing expenses, and total debt service, which is what percentage of your income is being included with housing expenses and all other monthly obligations that are on your credit bureau, such as um, credit cards, lines of credit, things they don't look at. They don't look at cable bills. They don't look at basic utilities and stuff. Uh, they assume that that comes with the other um, you know, 58 or 60% of your income. So total debt service is everything that was in gross debt service. Principal, interest, taxes, heat, and half of strata if applicable, plus all debts. Um, car loans, car leases, credit card, alimony payments, anything like that. Now where, where does that number? Well with gross debt service they didn't want to see it higher than, than 35, unless you had exceptional credit they'd go up to 44. And with uh, total debt service, all your debts, including your heat, they won't, don't want to see that any higher than between 42 and 44, again dependent on credit and again dependent on bank to bank to bank. So there's very big differences across the board here. Now I'm going to do some examples down below that you can look at and that you can actually follow through and I'll run a couple of scenarios to show you how to calculate it. The rules of thumb are 
no higher than 35% GDS, no higher than 42% TDS. If you can fit it within those guidelines, you're probably going to get approved based on your taxable income. If you're not declaring something, don't think of bringing it into the equation because the bank can't. So with that, uh, take a look at the, re uh, the list of information I have below. If you have any questions, please send a comment to me down here or rate the videos, view my other topics on the side, and get back to me as soon as you can. For the Mortgage Center, I'm Roland Smith.